Glory be to God. Well, let's go ahead and praise you. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Ancient of Days. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We bless your name. We worship you. We adore you. There's no one like you. You are the Almighty God. Glory be to your name, Lord. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. My Redeemer. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be with whom nothing shall be impossible. We give you all glory. We give you all honor. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you for what you did yesterday. Oh, Lord, thank you for what you did yesterday. Ancient of days, thank you for what you did yesterday. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We are here again today, Lord. We want to have an encounter with you. Please, make it possible in Jesus' name. Almighty God, before this day is over, let your praise come out of our mouth reach out to the heavens. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let someone shout hallelujah. Now shake hands with one or two people and said, good evening, God bless you. And then you can shout a big hallelujah to God. And <laughs> How many of you got a healing yesterday? <laughs> All right. In the morning devotion in my family today, 
uh, it was practically thanksgiving and testimonies coming from those who got the healings. Like I've said, we would love to hear your testimonies, so if you don't mind, write them out, pass them on to the ushers. I think they will gather them together and uh, they will get them to me one way or the other. Okay, who is expecting another major miracle today? I want to assure you in the name that's above every other name that you will not be disappointed. Yeah. Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4 from verse 10 to 11. Revelation 4. 10 to 11. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Yesterday we explained to you what we mean by divine encounter. We said you are going one way, and the Almighty is coming in the other direction, and the two of you collide. And that when the supernatural collides with the natural, the natural must give way. And then we explain that because you were created for his pleasure, when you have an encounter with you, there's no way he will leave you the way he has met you. He will not allow any dysfunction in the person that he had created. If we were not around yesterday, try and get the tape of the, yes, of the yesterday uh, sermon and send it to your friends. As they listen to that tape, they too will receive their healings in Jesus' name. But today we want to go a step further. We want to go even a step higher. Yesterday we want you to know, or we wanted you to know and shared with you that um, just one divine encounter can put an end to your physical problems. Today, we want to tell you that just one divine encounter can put an end to your material problems. So somebody is about to have a financial breakthrough. Like I did yesterday, I will tell you a story. And then tonight, in particular, I'm not going to be long in preaching because you're about to do something you have never done before that is going to cause God to do something for you that he had never done before. It's a story many of us have heard before, but maybe we didn't fully understand uh, the wonders of it all. Several years ago, when I became the general overseer, I went to my village, and one very rich man there came to see me and said, now you're a big man. Not that I agreed with him. But he said it. 
He said, now I suppose you have something important that you want to do here in this, your village. Like uh, when your mother is old and she's dead and you want to come and bury her. You have no house. Where will you put your important friends? I wasn't thinking of a house. It brought up the, the discussion. He said, I will help you. I will give you the blocks that you need to build a house. And you can pay me for it any time you like. Oh, I thought this must be help from heaven. So we agreed. He supplied the blocks. And little by little, I built a little bungalow. The very day we roofed the house, he sent to me and said, where's my money? And I had spent the last cobble I had for the roofing. And I was here on this campground when his messenger came. I had prayed all night on the camp. The camp was very big then. The houses here were less than 30. I put my head on my table. I said, oh God, you know I didn't want to build a house. I'm now about to be put to shame. Over to you, Lord. Do I hear somebody say to God, I transfer my problems to you today? <laughs> I put my head on the table and I fell asleep because I had been praying all night. When I woke up, there was a man there standing. He had come all the way from the north. And he said, Sir, I want to see the head of this organization. I said, He is in heaven. He said, I want to see his representative here on earth. I said, Well, that's me. He said, two days ago, God spoke to me and said, take this money, go to Lagos. On the way to Lagos, I will tell you where to come down. When you come down, you will see a place where they were just building. Ask for the head of that organization and give, you, give him the money. He gave me the envelope, I prayed for him, and he left. When I opened the envelope, it was the exact amount I was owing. I didn't know the man. He wasn't a member of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. He didn't know me. He didn't know my address. But God knew him. God knows me. God knows where I am seated. And he sent the man before I needed the money. And the money came on time. I had a financial divine encounter. There is someone listening to me today. You are going to have a mighty financial encounter. I'm only going to do two things. And then I will get out of the way and let God be God. Number one, I'm going to tell you why. Why am I so sure? 
And then number two, I'm going to tell you how. Then I will leave you and God together. You are created for his pleasure. And Psalm 35 verse 27, Psalm 35 verse 27 says, He has pleasure in your prosperity. He said, His pleasure is that you prosper. In 3 John verse 2, 3 John verse 2, he said, I wish above all things that you prosper. He said, number one of my pleasure concerning you is that you prosper. Yeah. He then said, number two is that you be in health. So what he did for you yesterday was number two. What he's about to do today is number one. Do I hear somebody say amen loud and clear? In John chapter 10 verse 10, John chapter 10 verse 10, he said, I have come that you may have life and have it how? More abundantly. Not just abundantly, but more abundantly. That's the Bible talking. That's God speaking. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, you can read the whole story from verse 1 up to verse 13. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 to 13. But he says specifically, that you, his pleasure is that you will be so blessed that you will be running away from the blessing and the blessings will overtake you so much so that you will be lending to nations. You know, when he was talking to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, you can read it from verse 1 to 3. Genesis 12 from verse 1 to 3. In just three verses, when he was speaking to Abraham, the word bless and blessing appeared five times. And the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. May I, on behalf of my God Almighty, decree to someone, God will bless you. That's number one. Number two, God will bless you. Number three, God will bless you. Number four, God will bless you. Number five, God will bless you. The Bible says in Psalm 69, verse 19, Psalm 69, verse 19, he says, he loads us with benefits. It's never stingy. His pleasure is to bless you in loads. That is why he said, in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, he says, all he has to do is open a window in heaven, pour you a blessing that there will not be enough room to receive. That 
kind of blessing that you are going to say to God, God, this is becoming too much. You are about to get it tonight. Oh, just hold on with me to the end. Because you might think, oh, <laughs> it's just uh, uh, trying to tickle our ears. I made a discovery, and I'm going to share it with you tonight. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 to 10, Proverbs 3, verse 9 to 10, he also said, you put me first, when I bless you, you won't have enough room to contain. That is what he says. In Luke chapter 5, from verse 1 to 7, Luke 5, from verse 1 to 7, when he was going to say thank you to Peter, it, when he had the first divine encounter with Peter, he blessed him so much. When his boat cannot contain it and he hired the second boat, the two boats were full and they were sinking. I've said it before. The unfortunate thing is that many of my children didn't believe me then, but you will believe me tonight. <laughs> that a day is coming when you take your blessings to a bank. They will close down for three days. In Judges chapter, in John chapter six, John chapter six, from verse five to thirteen, when he decided to feed five thousand people with five loaves of bre bread and two fishes. After he has fed them, after everybody had more than enough, there were 12 baskets over. He's always blessing beyond your ability to contain. I can go on and on showing you scriptures after scriptures to show you that it is his pleasure to bless you. But the important thing is, how? And I'll be very brief. <laughs> because like I said, you're going to do something tonight you've never done before. How is he going to do it? How will you become so blessed that you will say, God, this is too much? And he will say, hey, I haven't started. Because he has said that one to me before, and I told some of you. When I said, God, this is becoming too much, he said, well, son, all you have to do is make up your mind that you don't want to live holy anymore. Then I will stop the blessing. And since I can't stop living holy, <laughs> all those who think they have seen anything, haven't seen anything at all. Is he going to bless you to the extent that you say, no, I don't want any more? And he will say, I've not started. It's not by any crooked method. Not by fraud. Not by stealing. Not by Yahoo Yahoo or whatever you call it. Because the Bible made it abundantly clear. Jeremiah 17, verse 11. Jeremiah 17, verse 11. If you get any kind of wealth the wrong way, he said you get it, but you won't spend it. That's what he said in his word. Oh, I know some people will say, we, we know what to do. We will give abundantly 
That's what daddy is about to say. No, 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 no. That's part of it. <laughs> oh, what, what about? He will probably tell us. The moment we say we are tired of poverty, then God will open the windows of heaven. Mm, that's, that's true, maybe, but that's not the big one. After all, the woman with the issue of blood that we spoke about yesterday, oh, she got tired of poverty. She got tired of sickness. She got tired because she has spent everything she had. She got tired of poverty. And you, I mean, you can support that one with Second Kings chapter four, from verse one to seven. Second Kings four, verse one to seven. The widow of the son of prophet, when the creditors came and they said, "We want to take your sons into bondage," hey, she grew tired of poverty, so she cried to the man of God. That's that's true, but that's not all. That's not really the big deal. Then what is the big deal, sir? Simple. Provoke a divine encounter. Do something huh, that will please God so much that he will come and collide with you. What is the something I could do? Oh, very simple. You know, when I was studying Second Chronicles chapter 1, from verse 6 to 15, Second Chronicles 1, 16 to 15, I thought, oh, the reason God blessed Solomon so much was because he gave a thousand bond offerings. That is true. I mean, Solomon gave a thousand bond offerings, then God came and asked him, what do you want? And he told God. And God said, okay, you ask for wisdom, eh, all right, but after wisdom, I will still load you with wealth. Then God opened my eyes. You know what Solomon did? It's not the 1,000 offering. It's the principle behind it. In a single day, Solomon said to God, thank you 1,000 times. First offering. Thank you, Lord. Second one, thank you, Lord. Hundredth one, thank you, Lord. Just imagine. Imagine yourself saying, thank you, Lord, 1,000 times. It will come down. It will pay you a visit. Whatever you ask, after he has done that, he will then pour prosperity on you. Because John chapter 4, verse 23 to 24, John 4, 23 to 24, said, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to do what? To worship him. Yesterday I told you, he made your hands to clap. Thank you. Thank you. What is the meaning of clapping? It means I'm praising God. He made your mouth to sing. 
He made your mouth to shout. He made your leg to dance. He made all that is within you to bless his name. What is he looking for? He's looking for worshippers. He's looking for someone who will praise him. Uh, just learn from the local musicians. When you go to a party, in those days when we used to go to parties, as soon as you arrive, most of the time you are there in a borrowed dress so that you look like a big man. The musician will send one of his uh, servants to go and find out your name. And then when he began to sing, he will call your name. And he will begin to eulogize you. He will call you emergency contractor. He will call you some big, big names until your head will swell. And the little money in your pocket, that you borrowed, that you borrowed, you will get up and go and give it to him. Something is about to happen to you today. Because all you are going to do, like we have never done before, is that we are going to praise him. I guarantee you, by the time you have said thank you, Lord, thank you, Almighty God, thank you, Ancient of Days, thank you, Unchangeable Changer, thank you, the Lion of Judah, thank you. The one who can change the unchangeable, thank you. By the time you have said thank you 100 times, your head will swell. Because you will know that God is here. And when God comes visiting you, when, when you have a divine, divine encounter, in addition to doing whatever you want him to do, he will give you a financial breakthrough. Oh, I'm going to get out of the way so you can begin to praise him. But before then, so that nobody will go out of here without a financial breakthrough. And please write it down, write today down. As the one who sends me is on his throne, before the end of this month, you will have a financial breakthrough. Before we begin to praise him, because that's all we're about to do. He says in his words, Proverbs 15, verse 8, Proverbs 15, verse 8, he says, The sacrifice of a wicked man is an abomination to him. In other words, he doesn't want somebody who is a sinner saying, Thank you, thank you, who said, Get away from here. So we will give you two minutes, wherever you are located. If you want him to listen to your praise, you must surrender your life to him so that his blood will wash away your sins. And so I'm going to say to anyone who will want to surrender his or her life to Jesus, you want him to save your soul, you want his blood to wash away your sins, I'm going to count from one to seven. Before I say seven, you better run forward to whatever is standing at the altar, wherever you are located, and go and give your life to Jesus Christ. 
And then you will be able to join us when we begin to praise him. So I'm counting now. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Okay, thank you. Now, those of you who have come forward, wherever you are, talk to the Almighty God now. And say, Lord Jesus Christ, please save my soul. Let your blood wash away my sins. I, I want my praise to become acceptable unto you. Please save my soul right now. And I will serve you from now on. All the days of my life, I will serve you. And the rest of us, let's stretch our hands to these, our new brothers and sisters, and intercede for them. Let's pray that the one who saved our souls will save their own souls also. That the blood that washed away our sins will wash away their own sins also. Just for another one minute, let's intercede for them. Let's pray for them. Let's pray for them. Those of you in front, Cry unto God, have mercy on me, save my soul. I will serve you for the rest of my life. I will praise you, I will adore you, I will do your will. Just save my soul, forgive my sins. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. My Father, my God, I want to thank you for your word. I want to give you all glory and honor for all these people who have decided to come over to your side now. Please receive them. Forgive all their sins. Save their souls. Wash them clean in your blood. Receive them into the family of God. From now on, when they praise you, let their praise be acceptable unto you. And from this moment onward, whenever they pray, answer them by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I rejoice with those of you who have given your life to Jesus today. And I want to promise you that from now on, by the grace of God, I will be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. And I promise you I'll be praying. So you, if you turn to your left, those of you who are in front here, you will see a man holding a placard. He will take you to where some people are waiting. They will collect the information I need, and then you come back and join us. You can begin to go now. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And those of you who are clapping, remember, that's why your hands were made. To clap unto God. That's why your hands are whole. 
That's why your hands can never wither. Thank you, Father. Amen. It's between you and God now. I'm going to give you 15 minutes. That within these 15 minutes, please don't do anything other than say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. Thank you, ancient of the... Just keep on saying that. Don't say more than that. Let's see how many times we have said that one within the next 15 minutes, and let us see what we follow. Just go ahead. It's, it's between you and him. Praise him like nobody's business. It, that's all he's waiting for. He will pay you a visit, and he will give you... A divine encounter that would lead to your marvelous financial breakthrough. Just, just go ahead. Praise him. It's you now. Just keep on saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, my king. Thank you, ancient of this. Thank you, unchangeable changer. Thank you, the great provider. Thank you, the great physician. Thank you, ancient of this. Thank you, the all-sufficient God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you. I adore you. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you adoration. There's no one like you. You are the Almighty. You are greater than the greatest. You are higher than the highest. You are richer than the richest. You are older than the oldest. Thank you. You are wiser than the wisest. Thank you. Thank you. Oh Lord, I worship you. This is me. Adeboye is saying thank you. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you because you are always there. Thank you because you are my all in all. Thank you because you are my source. Thank you because there's nothing too hard for you to do. Thank you for what you've done in the past. Thank you for what you are doing now. Thank you for what you are going to do this year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say thank you. All I want to say is just thank you. Thank you because you are good. Thank you because you are kind. Thank you because you are wonderful. Thank you because you are patient with me. Thank you because your gentleness has made me great. Thank you, Lord, for my beginning. Thank you for my present. Thank you for my future. Thank you. Thank you, O oh Lord God Almighty. Thank you. Thank you for my beginning. Thank you for my present. Thank you for my future. Thank you for the salvation of my soul. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for giving me strength. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my children. Thank you for food. Thank you for appetite to eat. Thank you, Lord, for dress. Thank you for the ability to wear them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for motion. Thank you for my hands that could clap. Thank you for my legs that could dance. Thank you for my eyes that could see your glory. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, ancient of this. Thank you, unchangeable changer. Thank you, almighty God. Thank you, the all-sufficient God. Thank you, Jehovah El Shaddai. Thank you, Lord. 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 In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. I stand here today as a representative of the Most High God. And I decree, God bless you. Your hands that you have been using to praise him, I decree that those hands be blessed. Whatever you touch from now on will prosper. The legs that you have been using to dance for him, I decree that these legs be blessed. When you go out, be blessed. When you come in, be blessed. May your progress be blessed. That mouth that I've been singing unto him, we always have something to sing about. That mouth that I've been shouting to him, we continue to shout for joy. You shall be blessed in the morning. You shall be blessed in the afternoon. You shall be blessed in the evening. You shall be blessed in the night time. God will send help to you. From the east, he will send help to you. From the west, he will send help to you. From the north, he will send help to you. From the south, he will send help to you. From heaven above, he will send help to you. God bless you. The more you praise him, the more he will bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let somebody shout hallelujah. Now, uh, we want to take our offering very quickly. And you know when God says he loves the cheerful giver, what he's saying is that he loves those who give him out of a grateful heart. When you are grateful, then you give to the best of your ability. Take an offering that will show him that you are grateful. And then dance with the nearest basket to you, give the offering, and then we'll pronounce, pronounce the final blessing on you before you begin to go home. 
Over to you, choir. I really want to thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Father, my God, we say thank you. 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 Thank you that we have something to give. Thank you for the grace to give. Thank you because you are our source. And our source can never run dry. Thank you. Father, thank you. Almighty, thank you. Great provider, thank you. Great sustainer, thank you. Our all in all, thank you. Jehovah El Shaddai, thank you. Bless the offering of your children. Sanctify it. Use it for your glory. And where this is coming from, Father, let there be a hundredfold returns.
My Father and my God, I know who you are. I know you're a God of wonders. Even before your children get home today, surprise them. In spite of whatever may be happening in the nation, surprise your children. Before the end of this week, surprise your children. Before the end of this month, surprise your children. Among these, your children, Lord God Almighty, listen to me now. Before the end of this year, raise up many millionaires. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. Thank you, Unchangeable Changer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. As you go home, praising him and thanking him, he will surprise you more and more. <laughs> but in the meantime, let the most grateful among us shout the biggest hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs>